Good morning, Lynn. Hi, good morning. First, I, I was just going to check my emails, make sure I had the right link link here. I had to wait till my husband was done making toast. <laughs> yeah, why? Well, um, that's what I was thinking too. Where can I go? You know, when you're in the house like this, I thought I can't go in the living room because he's out there in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes he sleeps in late, but I'm yeah. in the bedroom now. <laughs> And the biggest open space I have is our dining room. So he needs to walk through here to get to the kitchen. So, yeah. but he's got his toast down. So I think oh, we're okay. good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to experiment myself to see if I was, we have a class at church on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And uh, we couldn't meet last week. So I, I told the instructor, I said, this Zoom works pretty well. Um, uh, you know, I'd like to, oh, um, here we go. See if I could, if we can get it set up for our class this Sunday. So we're going to work on that later today. Yeah, that was one of the reasons I did the class yesterday because the minister was hoping that more people would come on from our church to learn how to use it. Um, and they didn't. So he's probably still going to have to teach them, but he did learn some stuff himself from what yeah. we did yesterday. So yeah. Well, it's a learning curve and it's hard. I mean, uh, it doesn't always work right the first time and, and yeah, and yeah, it's, so it's hard. not a hundred percent intuitive. It's, yeah. it's much easier to click something. It goes to a recording, you watch it and then you're done. Yeah. Um, and we will be able to do that from this today. Oh. So I think I do have at least one more person who's, going to join um do you live in south park we are in first ward oh okay oh close yeah yeah same general i love your woodwork there in your house yeah it, it's uh we really like the craftsman style houses and yeah. this house was uh, available to rent when we moved here last fall so mm -hmm. we are happy to be in it because yeah. we already had the furniture that went with this style of house. Yeah. Yeah. Where did you come from? Peekskill, New York. Hmm. I guess that's upper state New York. It's about, um, um, if you know where the Tappan Zee Bridge is, it's hmm. about 20 minutes north of there. Um, and otherwise it's about an hour north of New York City. Oh, okay. It's actually part of that county in New York that's having so many of the coronavirus cases right now. That's out. Ooh. It's just outside the city. Oh. So, but so far, everyone we know are, you know, they've just been staying home and staying safe, and they're all okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I woke up sort of congested this morning. <clears throat> And, and I always, I had, tend to have this raspy sounding voice and I've had a cough all winter and, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's from being inside so much. I'm thinking I'm going to open up the windows today and get some fresh air in here. Yeah. Well, yes, today it's going to be warm enough that you can do that. Um, yeah. But yeah, this house has forced air heat and oh. I think it just blows dust out of the vents constantly. We had radiators before and we never had so much allergy as what we've had here. Oh yeah. When I first moved here 20 some years ago, I went to the doctor and I said, I don't know what's the matter with me. And uh, he looked and he did an S shape on my arm and he said, you got allergies. I said, mm -hmm. no, I don't. I don't have allergies. Yes, you do. <laughs> So eventually I went through three years of allergy shots. Oh dear. So I'm just going to check my email real quick and see, see any messages. One of my former students was planning to be on this morning. But if we don't have anybody else on, 
Well, if there's nobody else, don't even bother doing it just for oh, me. Oh, no. I, I actually um, am happy to do it because I haven't done my own practice. We keep getting calls from the senior center making sure we're okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. But we never answer, so they probably, you know, I wonder if they're going to send an ambulance out here. I've got to call them back sometime. I just, I always get the voicemail. <laughs> yeah. It was when I was taking a shower and my phone was out here. I didn't know. So. All right. Well, I don't see any message from her today, so I think we'll just get started. Um. So um, we're going to start on the floor. Uh, so if you have a mat, you can put it down. If you don't have a mat, you can use a towel or something. Um, I do have a mat, but it's downstairs if I run down there and get it. Yeah, if you like. Um, okay. I guess the only other thing you might need is a pillow. Um, okay. Yeah, that's probably that. it. And is, is your computer a laptop? Yeah. Are you able to um, set it down on the floor? Oh, yeah. Kind of at a, an angle to your mat so I can see you. No, it might be too close here. I don't know. I think it's fine. Okay. Um, oh, I think the only other thing you might want is a, a blanket. Um, just for cushioning under your knees. Uh, it looks like you're on a hardwood floor there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Or you could use the pillow. Also. Okay, I'll use the pillow probably. Okay. I usually have people use a folded blanket under their knees. Yeah. Because even if you don't have knee pain, it's uh -huh. just I, nice I, to have. I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so... We're just going to start with some breathing and you can just bring your hands to rest on your belly. And just begin by letting your breath be a little longer, a little deeper. And you probably will be feeling your belly rise and fall as you do that. And then let your breath stay long and deep and smooth and let your arms come down to your sides. And we're gonna start with just one arm moving. So on an inhale, you'll lift one arm, bring it overhead to the floor, and then exhale, bring it back to your side. And then we'll do the other side. So when you take your arm overhead, you should find a placement that the upper arm can rest completely on the floor and exhale back down. So if you find that your elbow or your upper arm are kind of hanging in space, take the arm wider, or you might even bend the elbow a little bit. 
for people who have shoulder limitations you may need to modify like that. So other arm, inhale up. And exhale back down. So we're changing side to side with each breath. So other arm, inhale up, finding that place where the upper arm and elbow rest, and then exhale back down. And then the other side, inhale up. And exhale back down. So continue side to side, one breath, one arm. And when that arm comes down to rest, we'll begin moving both arms. So inhaling both arms up at the same time and exhaling back down to your side. So it looks like you have pretty good shoulder mobility. It hurts more on the left side. And I think on the left I, side. Okay. I, I sleep on that side, so. That could so, be it. It feels like it's stretching out. When it first did it, boy, I thought I'd never get my, get my arm all the way down there. Yeah, well, this is why um, in this tradition, which is more of a therapeutic yoga, um, we ask people to find the placement so that the upper arm is able to rest. And it can be wider, it can be a bent elbow. Yeah. If you have... I noticed quite a difference between my left arm and my right arm <clears throat> in terms of my right arm moves fine, but my left yeah. arm seems very stiff. And it's probably because I scrunch it up when I sleep. <laughs> the little cat is um, <laughs> scratching at the carpet, if you hear it that. And the next time the arms come down, we'll continue the arm movements. Um, so the arms will be inhaled up, and then as the arms come down, you'll fold one knee into your chest. And then inhale the foot to the floor as the arms come back up. And then fold the other knee in as the arms come down. Good, yeah, so continue that side to side. So both arms come down, one knee folds in. And foot down, arms overhead, and then the other side. And after this one, take your arms out to the sides. They can be shoulder high or a little bit lower. And with your feet on the floor, inhale at center. And as you exhale, let both knees drop over to one side. And then inhale back to center and exhale to the other side. And just continue that side to side. Now, if it's comfortable for you, you can turn your head to the opposite side from your knees. But if that causes neck pain, the head can just stay center.
And the next time you come center, fold both knees into the chest. And for this, you can have your hands on your thighs. So as you inhale, you'll stretch both legs up toward the ceiling. And on the exhale, you'll fold both knees in. Now, if you like, you can hug the knees in using your hands to get a little extra stretch. And then inhale, stretch both legs up. And exhale and fold in. So we'll do that a few times. And the next time you fold your knees in, you can roll to one side. And we'll come up to all fours. So this is where if you want to place a blanket under your knees, you can or your pillow. Okay. Okay, so from here, on the inhale, you reach the chest forward. On the exhale, drop the head down and sit back toward your heels. Inhale to all fours, reaching the chest forward. Exhaling, sitting back to child pose. Okay. So in this tradition, we don't really do cat and cow. And part of the reason for that is you actually get a more complete stretch in the lower back, um, moving through this. I have to be careful. I can't arch my back any more than neutral. I have to hold mm -hmm. over and over again. Yep, and, and that's fine. Lengthening is mostly what we're going for there. So the next time you come to all fours, stay there. And you're going to extend one leg back behind you so the toes are on the floor. And from here, we're just going to shift our weight a little forward and back. So you'll feel a stretch in the foot and the calf and possibly further up the leg. So just shifting a little forward and back. And then the next time you shift back, just hold the stretch for a couple of breaths. And then release that. And we're going to come into a kneeling side plank, so balancing pose. So whichever knee is on the floor now, you're going to turn that leg out at a little bit of an angle and roll to the inside of the foot of the long leg and come up so that you're in kind of a side plank balancing posture. So a couple of breaths here. Good. And bring your hand back down, bring your knee back down, and you'll square yourself up. And then send your other leg long behind you, toes on the floor, and shift forward and back a few times.
And then shift back and stay and hold the stretch. And release that. The knee that's on the floor, you're going to turn that leg out a little, roll to the inside of the long leg's foot, and open the arm up toward the ceiling so you're balancing. Good. And bring the hand back down, square yourself back up. And a few times again, inhale, reaching the chest, exhale, sitting back to child pose. All fours, reach the chest, exhale, sit back to child. A few times. Next time, you come to all fours. Come to stand on your knees. And how are your knees with this? Oh, well, especially on the pillow, they're fine. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. All right, so standing on the knees, we're gonna do kind of a kneeling version of warrior pose. So you'll step your left foot forward. Let's start with the left foot. And you can have your hands on that thigh. Inhale, lengthen the spine up. Exhale, drop your weight forward. So you're keeping this lift up through the spine. Inhale, back up. And exhale, forward. So doing this, you're probably feeling a Nice stretch in the front of the back leg's hip or thigh. Yep. Holly, such a noisy girl. And the next time you drop forward, stay there for a couple of breaths. Come back up. And from here, we're going to twist around to the left. Bring the left hand to your lower back. And the right hand can either stay on the thigh or you can bring it down to the floor inside the left foot. So you'll get a little more of a stretch on the outside of the hip if you're able to do that. If that's not working for you today, just stay up. Okay, so I'm twisting, I'm on, my left knee is up, I'm twisting to the left. Yes. And which and so oh boy yeah I can't get all the way down to the floor with my left arm. Yeah, that's fine. I was on my back. Well, okay, this is a place uh, where sometimes we do use a yoga block, but yeah. if you're feeling a stretch on the back of the left hip, yeah, it does it, it you don't have to go forward. Okay. It just gives you a little extra stretch. And then come back to center. Bring that knee back under you. Inhale, take the arms to the sides and up. And exhale back down. So just that a few times. Inhale. And exhale. And when the arms come down, we'll switch to the other side. So the right foot comes forward, hands on that thigh. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, keep the length as you drop forward. 
and inhale up and exhale forward. Now the next time you drop forward, hold the stretch for a couple breaths. Inhale back up. And now we're coming into the twist to the right. So the right arm comes to the lower back. The left hand can be on the right knee, or if you want to on the side, you can bring the hand to the floor. As long as you feel a stretch on the outside of the right hip. Back to center, bring that knee back under you. Inhale the arms up, exhale, fold down to child pose. Inhale to all fours, tuck your toes under and press to downward facing dog. Lifting the hips, knees come off. Inhale to all fours. Exhale, sit back to child pose. All fours again on the inhale, toes tuck under. Exhale, downward facing dog. And one more time. Inhale, all fours. Exhale, child pose. All fours on the inhale, toes tuck under. Downward dog, exhale. From here, you can walk your hands back towards your feet and take your pillow out of the way. Mm, okay. Okay. Uh, should, I, should I put it back up? Yeah. Sure. You know, as I said, it was congested this morning. I remember mm -hmm. I used to take yoga too. And if I would go to class, if I was felt like I was, had a cold or something. Boy, that's miserable <laughs> when yeah. you do those downward poses. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, we'll, we'll do a little okay. breathe, breathing practice that may okay. help that. Uh, so, so far, so good? Yeah. Good. Except for my nose. Except for your nose. <laughs> okay. Um, do you need to get a tissue? Yeah, I think I will. Maybe okay. You don't mind. No problem. <clears throat> okay. Feel better. All right. So let's start. Um, the feet are parallel to start. You're going to turn your right foot out a little and step the left foot forward. Okay. And then on an inhale, we'll bend the front knee and bring the arms up. And exhale, arms down, knee straightens. So we're coming into warrior, bending the knee, the arms come up. Exhale, out of warrior. A few times like that. So the next time we come to warrior, keep the knee bent. As you exhale, bend your elbows out to the sides. And then inhale, reach back up. And exhale and bend. Oh. And reach. And bend. And reach back up. 
Arms down, knees straight. And step that foot back. <clears throat> Turn the left foot out, step the right foot forward. And again, bending the front knee, arms come up, warrior. Exhale, out of warrior, knee straight, arms down. Inhale to warrior. Exhale, out of warrior. So continuing with your breath. And the next time you come to warrior, knee stays bent, exhale, bending the elbows out to the sides. Inhale, reaching back up. Exhale, bend. Inhale, reach. Exhale, bend. Reach back up. Arms down, knees straight. Step back. Inhale, take the arms up. As you exhale, bend the knees to a half chair pose. Bring your hands to your thighs. Stay here. Take a deep inhale. Exhale here. Inhale, press the feet. Come back up. Arms up. Arms down. Exhale. So we'll do two more of those. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, half chair, hands to the thighs. Stay for a breath. Inhale. Exhale. Press the feet, come all the way up. Arms down, exhale. One more. Inhale. Exhale, chair. Stay for a breath. Press the feet, come back up. Arms down and pause here. Come back to your breath. So doing chair pose often makes the breath a little faster. So just give yourself a little time for the breath to come back to normal. And then we're going to stand sideways on the mat. Feet wide apart, maybe two or three feet. Arms open to the sides. And as you exhale, twist to one side. And you're coming into a twist, folding down toward that leg. And then inhale back to center and exhale to the other side and back to center on the inhale so it's like the windmills most of us did in elementary school years and years ago yeah and twisting exhaling inhaling back up a couple more to each side So the next time you come into your twist, we're going to stay here. As you inhale, feel the spine lengthen. As you exhale, draw the belly in. You may be able to deepen into the twist, but as you inhale, uh, because you're lengthening the spine, you might come out of the twist a bit. So exhale, deepening into the twist, inhale, lengthening. One more breaths. And then inhale, come back up. 
and we'll do the other side. Staying for a few breaths. Lengthening the spine, deepening into the twist. Untwisting a bit on the inhale and twisting again on the exhale. And then inhale back up. Let the arms come down. Step the feet back together. Um, are you okay with um, standing forward bent when you come back up? I think, I think so. Okay. Um, if not, you can use a chair in front of you so you're not going all the way down. Uh, okay. Let me see what they are first. <clears throat> <clears throat> so inhale, arms up, exhale, fold forward. We're going to stay for one breath in the forward bend. And then inhale, the knees bend slightly, come back up, arms down to your sides, exhale. Inhale, arms up, fold down on the exhale, slight bend in the knees. Stay for two breaths this time. And then with a slight bend in the knees, come back up on the inhale. And the next time, we're going to stay for three breaths. So exhaling down to forward bend. Stay for three full breaths. And after the third breath, knees bend, come all the way up, and arms down. Turn your right foot out and step your left foot forward. As you inhale, come to warrior, knee bends, arms up. As you exhale, you're going to swing the arms around to your lower back, straighten the front knee, and fold forward. And then bend the knee, sweep the arms around, and come back up. So exhaling, pyramid pose. Inhaling, back up to warrior. A few times like that. more. And then when you come up, stay. Let the arms come down. So we're going to come into a twist and stay for a few breaths. So as we inhale, we'll come to warrior. As we exhale, we're going to twist around to the left, bringing the left hand behind the back the right hand across to the thigh. And a couple of breaths here. And then come back to center, knee straightens, step back, square up your feet. Left foot turns out, right foot steps forward. Inhale to warrior. Sweeping the hands behind the back, folding out over the front leg as you straighten it. Inhale, bending the knee, coming back up. Exhale, pyramid pose. Inhale, warrior pose, bending the knee. A couple more like that. So 
So after this one, we'll stay up and front knee is bent, coming into the twist, turning to the right, right hand behind the back, left hand to the opposite thigh. A couple of breaths here. And come back to center, come back up, step back. Taking the arms to the sides, lift onto the balls of the feet, little balance, and then exhale back down. Inhale, rising onto the balls of the feet, exhale down. Few more times like that. When you come down this time, we're going to come into tree pose. So I'm going to give you more of a view of the legs. So, oh, too sunny. We're going to start by having the weight on the left leg, lift the right heel, and turn the knee out. Now, if you want, you can just bring the right heel to the left ankle. If your balance is pretty good, you can bring the foot up onto the calf. And the one thing we don't want to do is to prop that foot on the knee joint. So it needs to be either above the knee or below the knee. And yes, you can use a chair for balance, of course. Much easier. And the arms can be to the sides if you like. Lengthen up through the standing leg and the spine. And release down. And walk your feet a few times. And then we'll switch to the other side. Okay. So standing on the right leg, left knee turns out. You can be anywhere from having the ball of the foot on the floor and heel to ankle or foot to calf. Arms can be to the sides for balance. Lengthen up through the standing leg and the spine. And release back down. Walk your feet. Now, since you already have the chair, we'll do dancer pose. So dancer pose, we'll start Standing on the left leg again. Actually, I'll turn this way. So, hand to foot. That's the thing I, the, the physical therapist has me working on. I can do it if I put it up on the bed like this. Oh, there. sure. Yes. Props are props. Yeah. Beds are, beds are good for things like that sometimes. So my cat has decided to join us. <laughs> my balance is not very good this morning. There we go. So sometimes after we've done these hip stretches, this posture is more successful. But if you're really tight there, then yeah. sometimes we use a strap. Yeah, I have a strap too. And you can release that side and we'll do the other side. And release. 
And we're going to come back down to the floor. Okay. Let me run to the bathroom quickly, if you don't mind. Keep going and I'll catch you. Sure. Hi, Lance. What are we going to do with you? <laughs> Holly, I need to be here. Right now we're just resting, following the breath. Eyes can be open or closed. Nice deep inhale, nice smooth exhale. So we're next going to come to some bridging and we'll do it in a particular way. So as you inhale, cross the feet, lift the arms. The arms will stay overhead. Exhale, release the spine back down one vertebra at a time. Inhale again and exhale, Bring your arms to your sides. Inhale, coming into bridge with the arms overhead. The arms stay as you exhale and release the spine back down. Inhale again. Arms down on the exhale. One more time. Inhale, bridge up, arms overhead. Arms stay, releasing the spine down. Inhale. Arms down on the exhale. Take the arms to the sides. Hold one knee at a time into the chest. Palms down on the floor. Inhale here. Exhale. Both knees go to one side. Inhale back to center. Exhale to the other side. So again, if you like, your head can turn the opposite direction from the knees. However, if that causes um, any kind of pain or strain in the neck, the head can just stay center. So feet are now off the floor. Exhaling, knees to one side. Inhaling back to center. Exhaling, other side. So a few times side to side this way. And the next time your knees go to the right side, you'll just stay there for a few breaths. So if you like, your right hand can come to the top of the knees. And if you like, you can turn the left arm palm up. And then just use your breath as a tool to find the places that feel kind of tight today. So it could be in the hip, the lower back, the ribcage, the shoulder. 
So using the inhale to help stretch and open those areas and the exhale to bring a little ease to those places. And then on your next inhale, bring the knees back to center. And we'll exhale to the other side. So this is another place, if you find that your knees are kind of hanging out in the air, you can either place a pillow under the knees or you can stretch the legs out a little longer. Either of those options is good. And Palms can be turned up. The head can turn away from the knee, so that part is optional. Nice deep breaths to find the places that feel like they need a little bit more opening up, sending your breath into those places on the inhale. And exhaling to bring a little ease to those areas. On your next inhale, bring the knees back to center. Have one hand on each thigh. As you inhale, stretch both legs up toward the ceiling. As you exhale, hold the knees in. You can hug the knees if you like. Inhale, stretch both legs up. Point and flex your toes a few times. And then fold back in. So on the inhale, you, you can do the, the pointing and flexing at the ankles if you like. But on the exhale, go ahead and fold in. So we're not staying very long to do the pointing and flexing. And then the next time the knees fold in, you're going to have one hand on each kneecap. And the hands are going to stay on the kneecaps. As you exhale, the knees fold in toward the chest. As you inhale, the arms go long. Hands stay on the kneecaps. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, knees away, arms long. A few more like that. So this posture is called Apanasana. And it's meant to kind of quiet down the body after we do things that are a little bit more demanding. The next time you fold the knees in, separate the knees wide apart. You still have the hands on the kneecaps. And then bring the knees together and away on the inhale. And exhale the knees in and apart. Inhale together and away. Exhale in and apart. A couple more like that. And the next time the knees come in and apart, 
You're going to take your hands either to your ankles or your feet and come into happy baby pose. So the feet go up toward the ceiling. You're either holding the ankles or the feet. And from here, you can rock side to side a little bit. And let that come to a stop. You can bring your feet back to the floor one at a time. And then from here, if, if you're good with your legs long on the floor, you can do that. If you prefer, you can have your knees bent feet on the floor, but with the feet wider than hip distance apart so that your knees can just fall together or you can use a pillow under your knees to support your knees. Um, so especially if you have low back issues, having support under the knees or keeping the knees bent is usually a better option. Bring your hands to your belly. Find a way to rest your hands on your belly so your upper arms are just resting on the floor. Your eyes can be closed or a little bit open. And for now, you're just going to feel the breath coming in, the belly rises, going out, the belly falls. And just following the movement of the breath. Now, ordinarily, I would do, especially if this was an evening class, I would just continue with the breathing in this position. But since it's a morning class, we're going to roll to one side and come up to sit. So you can either sit on um, the floor or in a chair. It really doesn't matter which you do. Actually, I think I'm going to sit on a chair. Okay. <laughs> It's kind of nice to do that sometimes. I haven't been able to sit cross-legged for years, but I'm working on it. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> well, most people have to sit up on something to sit comfortably cross-legged, but we're all in denial about that. <laughs> our, our bodies don't really work that way very well. All right, so since, since it is um, allergy season, we're gonna do a little bit of Kapalabhati breath, um, which if you have not done before, uh, the idea um, here is that drawing the abdominal muscles in with a little bit of force uh, pushes the breath out through the nose, which helps to clear the sinuses. Okay. Um, so it kind of looks like, uh, <laughs> and sometimes my own sinuses are a little stuffy, so it, it comes out sounding like a horse snorting a little bit sometimes. Okay. Um, so it looks like this. So the abdominal muscles contract, the belly draws in, the breath goes out the nostrils, and then the inhale is just um, allowing the breath to come back in. So this is not breath of fire, which um, is more forceful both in, in and out, but this is Kapalabhati. So the emphasis is on the exhale and drawing the belly in, but the inhale can be kind of slow. So we'll do about a dozen of these. If you feel that you're getting lightheaded, 
just take a pause and take a couple of normal breaths and come back to it. Okay. So um, let's actually let's just do maybe three to practice. Mm -hmm. So when you're ready, exhale using the abdominals. Inhale through the nose. It's an odd. Exhale. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I, I can see your belly drawing in, so you've got it. Okay. So now Not we'll do time. about 12 in a row. Okay. So when you're ready, inhale and then. And then you can pause, just take some normal breaths. So often what happens when you do that kind of breathing is that it's a little stimulating to the nervous system. So it has a very different effect than if you're just feeling your belly rise and fall. Um, so we'll do one more round of 12. So when you're ready, inhale. And then just relax the breathing. And then from where you are, we're just going to bring the hands together in front of the heart. As you inhale, open the arms to the sides. As you exhale, bring the hands back together. Inhale, open. Exhale, together. Once more. And back together. And let your head drop down toward the heart. Release the heart forward. In gratitude to all the teachers who've come before. And the greatest teacher of all, which is that within ourselves. Namaste. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So, if I were watching a video, I would have stopped halfway through. If no one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so this is kind of the pace that I do things in any of my classes, just so you know. Um, once you're past 40 or 45, you need to take a little more time to warm up the joints and get things moving. And uh, so I do pace things that way. And I have not um, taken a class with the woman who does teach normally at Ollie, but I imagine she takes a similar approach. Yeah. I've taken her classes and she's really good. Yeah. She always offers them at the same time I want other classes. So. Oh. <laughs> I haven't been able to go lately, but yeah, she's good. But it's a whole two hours, almost a whole two hours. Wow. A two hour class is long. Um, so you do have to really pace yourself when you're doing a class that long. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, I, I guess I'll see you tomorrow for the 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Okay, good. Um, so I will, um, send you a link to this recording so you can do it whenever you want to. 
Uh, I'm probably going to um, post these onto YouTube. Um, so you could access there and it will be under uh, breathcenter.com. I haven't um, set up the YouTube page for that yet, but I, I will start posting videos there. And um, I'll keep people informed about the, the chair yoga classes also. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. So one day when we're able to get back to live classes, I hope you can join us at the church classes. Um, yeah. That's, that's not just for people who attend our church. It's for anybody. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, like I said, normally we sign up for a lot of Ollie classes. So yeah. I schedule, we, I can't do anything else really, in, but then in between Ollie classes, if we're not traveling, I like to do stuff. So. Mm -hmm. um, so how was the pace of the class today for you? Was it a little slow or was it about right? No, I think it was okay, actually. Sometimes it seems like it's slow and then about five or 10 minutes later, you're thinking, no, this isn't too, you know, so, <laughs> um, you know, um, sometimes I think, oh yeah, this is so easy. This is almost boring. This is so easy. But then you realize and, it, you know, a few minutes later that, oh, wait, I'm really stretching something here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And holding those uh, twists is a little challenging. And, and the balancing postures are always a little challenging. But I try to make sure that people are prepared for whatever's coming later. So, yes, it seems a little boring at first, but we get somewhere with it. Wow. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, and I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> goodbye. Bye-bye.